like trying to get it back to working yet. And finally, at like 5 6 o'clock in the morning, I was like, all right, I'm just, I hit, hit me. I'm just gonna put the other AMI up. Put the other AMI up. Took me like half an hour to get it reassociated with the security group and the load balancer, put that all back in again. And it was working just fine. I'm like, oh, well, great, you know. And then I sent off an angry tweet to Adobe in the afternoon, at three o'clock in the afternoon, within 30 minutes, one of their tech support guys, uh, I forgot who, um, and got back to me and said, hey, uh, are you around? I'll help you through that. And he got on my AMI and you know, I gave him, or actually we did a, did a uh, screen share, we got on there and he actually fixed the problem for me. And I was like, oh, wow, I didn't realize it was that simple. And so it shows you part of that. that all this stuff, I mean, it's, it's all virtual. You make copies of everything. It, it doesn't cost you hardly a thing to, I mean, right now they, to keep these on here, how big is this? Uh, I don't know, will it tell you how big it is? I don't think it tells you how big it is. Maybe it's up here. It doesn't tell you. But it doesn't really cost you anything to, to make, to keep uh, these instances around. Um, here's my load balancer. So if you notice, I have these three ports open right here. So stickiness is enabled, 443 certificate enabled, 443. 3389 forwarding, 3389, and of course you can forward a port to a different port. You can forward this port 3389 to say 5000 or something. It'll all take care of it for you. And you can make these individual according to each individual thing that you have, uh, specification that you have. Here's my VPC, um, and here's my auto scaling groups. And I didn't, I ended up turning my auto scaling off. Yeah, I don't have any, <coughs> have any, uh, because I didn't really end up not needing it. Um, I I had it set up for the first two days we had registration, and it almost kicked it off. But I just kind of realized at this point in time, well, you know what? What I can do is I can just take my IM AMI and launch it on a heavier duty EC2 that has more memory, more bandwidth, more or not more memory, more CPU. It's way more powerful. It's way faster. And that way, I won't ever kick off an alarm. It'll be just fine. And after I'm done for a few hours, I can just bring it back down to the other uh, EC2. So completely configurable according to what you need. And of course, they will charge you by the hour for everything. So you just turn it off and have the other one turned on and do what you want to do. Completely custom. Uh, security groups are important. You'll have security groups um, set up for everything from the website to the RDS service um, and they, uh, they, they deal with your inbound traffic, your outbound traffic, uh, what they allow. Um, again, security is, is and, and you can watch all this stuff, you can log everything if you want, you can put everything into your S3 bucket so it'll log all the logs for you and S3 costs next to nothing to keep out there so you have huge logs. Um, the one thing I did was on my login system, I Uh, on my login system, I had uh, it would record all everyone trying to my login system would would record all of their IP addresses. So if they tried to log in and it failed, it would record, it would record their IP address, the machine they were using, um, what, uh, what password they tried to use, what username they tried to use, and all that kind of stuff. And every success, obviously, it would record as well. Um, what I ended up finding was it would record my internet gateway or my load balancer because it it would actually, I think it was, it was, it was the internal, so it was the load balance that they would, they would, because uh, the, the machine, the EC2, would actually see the load balancer as the internet, or as the user, I should say, as a user, because your, your load balancer controls your user. 
Um, so the next thing, uh, database services. And that's uh, right here, where's the RDS? So here is the RDS service. So this has actually changed the last time I used it. So right now it's using 86 megabytes of memory. Uh, I have it's 20 gigs worth right now. It's only a small database, it's probably like maybe a gig in size in total. Uh, tells you everything that's going on, any alarms, backing everything up, does everything for you automatically. Here is it's a micro instance. So uh, one virtual CPU, one gig of memory. Um, and you can actually upgrade this on the fly. So you don't need to take it offline. If you, can, if you want to say, hey, I want to upgrade this to, um, to uh, more CPU, more memory, um, more whatever, more I.O., input, output, real simple, it'll be done for you. Um, if you notice, where is endpoint? Right here, this is your endpoint. I, Amazon is, they're networking engineers, I mean, in, in my opinion, not that I'm a networking guy, but they're just absolutely brilliant. I mean, every single device that you load, you can get to from the internet without a DNS name, or excuse me, without, a, without a, a, a domain name. But they give you, they automatically assign you a DNS name. So I can click on this and then put in colon 5433 and I can automatically get, get to it without having to have to use a, a you know, friendly name. And same thing with your EC2. You can spin up an EC2 server and you can get directly to that with this domain name right here. That they assign you without using your, uh, your host name. Um, are you charged for instance as well? Yes. Uh, here you are charged uh, per, per hour. Per database also. Per database also. Well, per database also. Yeah, that's one reason we didn't go with it because we, we had a lot of little databases and it was going to cost us a boatload of money to do it. Can you share? Are you? What? Well, can you, can you share database between two instances? Yeah, I, I think you can share multiple databases with an instance because you get like a slice of the database server. I mean, well, database no, it's server. not server. We have, we actually have a database for each one of our clients, and we will have anywhere between thirty and fifty databases. But you can run, them. you can run an instance which has those twenty thirty databases inside. So they charge you for every database you set up, though. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like five bucks a month per database or something. So we were we were looking at, you know, it was going to cost us a hundred and something dollars just to have RDS going a month. With very little space, we can, none of our stuff is big, just that we have lots of databases. Not lots of tables, lots of databases. Yeah, I can't get into... And then the other thing we couldn't do that they don't allow with RDS is they don't allow database level backup and restart. Right. Again, which we, oh, really? we do all the time. We do all of our database stuff yes. locally, save it off and push it up to our server. Can't do that with that. So what, that's a really good point, actually. Um, I wish I would have written this down. When you set up your instance, you can't, like he said, you're actually getting a piece of the pie. So you're going back to that one prior slide is they actually limit you on certain things. And that's one of the things that limit you. What you have to do is you have to do a, a, a not a backup, it's a, uh, what's it in the SQL world? Well, you get the structure. You stored as a, start a script, I think you can You stored as a script. Right click, export database as a script, and save that script. And then you can run the script and create a new database. Exactly. And then you have to go and import all your tables yeah. individually. It's That's a lot more yeah. work than what we wanted to do with all of our data. Right. <laughs> it was a lot more work than I anticipated on my side as well. Yeah. A lot of work. Um, I didn't really get charged by the database. I, yeah. I have like three in mind, but I only get charged 
I don't know what it was. It was like seventeen dollars. So once you spin up an instance of, of say, a SQL server, mm -hmm. can you connect to it through SQL like, SQL, SQL Server? Right here, here it is, right here, instance. You can either use uh, this name right here, or you can use the actual IP address, but I always use this name right here. You just put this in here, colon 5433, and boom, I change the port. I just change my port on mine, because I just I like doing that, for security reasons. Um, and uh, there you go. And you can enable, what's cool about it is, well, on SQL, Microsoft SQL, you can't do um, forced encryption for the connection, but Amazon provides you with a certificate. So you have to load this. You can load the certificate on the individual computer or server that you're connecting from, and then uh, you can force that. Then you can have that connection to be secure. And you don't pay for that secure certificate. It's it's involved in the thing, right? So encrypted. So what are, if you can't back it up, what are snapshots? So you go back to your pre-read screen. What are snapshots? Is that a... Is that a uh, these, these are the actual... Um, well, you can back it up, but it backs it up for you automatically on their side. Make sense? A snapshot's your entire instance. Right. So if we did a snapshot, it would take all of our 50 databases. Oh, right. okay. Yeah. It's a snapshot of the instance, not a snapshot right. of the database. Right, right. And they're all 20 gigs in size. That's not no word they said. And encrypted false. You can turn this on. Um, on off. And again, there's different ways you can encrypt it. You can encrypt it at uh, the storage level, you can encrypt it at, at the SQL level. And that's by region. The Virginia region has the highest level of encryption. You can choose that, but you pay a lot more money for it. And you can't use SQL Server Express. You have to use the um, the main SQL powerhouse one. And you can't run SQL you can't run it on a uh, on a micro level, right here. This is the micro. Where is it? DB two dot micro. This is one of the smallest ones that they offer. You have to have a, a larger, uh, more more RAM and more memory. Um, so uh, next up, Route fifty three. So I have one hosted zone, being charged 50 cents a month for that. And here are all my name servers I put in here. Um, where is the actual, uh, you can run health check so you can ping it to make sure it's always up and running and if it doesn't uh, pass the amount of pings, it'll forward it somewhere else. Um, Okay, so um, this is important for the domain key for sending emails. If you want to send emails and you want to be as uh, legitimate as possible, you want to put your DKIP key or something for the email service, you want to put that in there. Uh, C name, uh, Amazon, uh, text files, you can prove who you are, start of authority, um, and the MX record. So what I did right here, so I actually have a hosting, um, service that I run outside and instead of at the time they didn't you they didn't have any mail services now they have the work mail uh, so what I did was I just had I set up a domain on one of my servers and I used the email service and boom and it all email went from here and got forwarded directly right on over to to my computer chief that knew that server knew and so that way I could keep track of uh, any bounces any replies things that didn't, you know, wouldn't matter. I had one email account that people would, um, could jump onto and actually check the email and actually go through the computer chief on that one. At what point do you mix over to, like, for example, Google or, like, business people? Yeah, you Am can... Am I still charge per... Yeah. Okay. Because you're using uh, so any outbound. Gotcha. Outbound email. And what's cool is I don't even have to have my, uh, my domain hosted with them or my EC2 coming from I can use... If I have a server somewhere, you know, sitting in my office, but 
I need reliable email service. A lot of people use just simply them to send out their emails. Just like, you know, way cheaper than using MailChimp, right? MailChimp's expensive. You can set up these guys, you have know somebody who know what they're doing, then you're stoked. Um, uh, health checks, I never really got into this, but you can, again, performance monitoring health checks, you can do just a myriad of checks on here. And it'll, when it hits certain points, it will, um, it will spin that up. Uh, CloudWatch. This is cool. So failover was taking place at the at the uh, Route 53 and not at the load balancer. No, depends. Uh, route 53. So if if uh, if you had different regions set up, one in Oregon, one in uh, Virginia. If some if if the if the DNS failed or the internet gateway failed at the Oregon level, it all makes a pumping step over to the, to the Virginia reason. That's how that works. And they have a, there's a cool third party tool that uses uh, for geolocation and failover, all that kind of stuff. And um, I didn't really get into it. I looked at it, but I didn't, I didn't have a reason for it. But it's, again, totally customizable. Um, all of these metrics, they charge you for. It's cheap, maybe 50 cents, dollar or something for a month. But it gives you, uh, by default, you get five minute uh, checks. If you want anything less than that, like down to the minute, uh, they'll, they're gonna charge you for that. Uh, and you can set up uh, an alarm for pretty much anything, or metrics for anything. Um, no, they're teaching me that going with I watch those all billion on get to see. The Virginia one seems to be their, their biggest, most important one. It gets all the new cool stuff. And, um, I don't think I have anything in here. Yeah, I haven't had any activity on here, but I do have, actually. So this was, uh, to give you a quick background, uh, we had three days of registration um, that were impacted. And they all started at 9 a.m. So at 8.55, the, the service level would be pretty much minimal. And then at 9 a.m., it spiked through the roof. We had hundreds of people on the server all registering for different classes and doing this and doing updating information and just going crazy. So I enabled the CloudWatch services that I wanted to see. And here you have CPU utilization going up. You can see the network going, in, going up right here. Um, and here you can see it coming back down again. Uh, disk reads, disk bytes, network in, network out, status check if anything failed, instances failed. Um, and it's all being done off of this particular EC2 right here that I had up and running, the M3 medium right here. And here's a public IP address. I can get to, again, I can get to the EC2 directly via the, via the IP address or the DNS name or the actual hosted name, host name. You can see a few minutes later with the real, the big spike, I, mean, I had 60% utilization for about a two, three minutes, and then they went back down again minute or two, a couple minutes, network in, network out, all this is huge up and then right back down again. So it was really cool to see, to see this stuff kind of come together. I mean, you can really tell the, the server utilization was down to nothing normally, but all of a sudden a huge spike. Um, and so here's a day prior. Uh, so I think I'll do some updates that day or early in the morning. Uh, disk reads and writes, and so you you have a whole bunch of different cool stuff that you can uh, you can see, and of course it'll log it all as well onto its its uh, logging program. Okay, so again, do not delete your VPC. Um, and here is your VPC, the best for last. So, so what happens if you delete it? 
Yeah, I'd like to see what we should do. <laughs> a demo of what we shouldn't do. Yeah, show us how, how not to Just to really to show you how, what to do. <laughs> I want to see you like one of your slides. <laughs> Let me tell you, dude. I, you know, the thing is, like, I didn't even realize what I did. And I didn't even know. Cause I, if you don't, you get just bliss, right? And then all of a sudden, it's like, my point, like, I'd be up at uh, like 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, why isn't this effing just working? Which one is it going to? What about this? And we didn't know really what we were doing, right? We would go back to the directions. Okay, directions set this. We set everything up exactly according to the directions. Why isn't it working? Oh, you have to get now this connection between these different things. And it's like afterwards you start making these different connections. But the documentation is phenomenal for that little individual thing, but not for putting everything, they glue all of it together. Um, here I have three VPCs, four internet gateways, routing tables, security groups. Um, you know, it shows you everything on this. They are really good at their presentation according to what you have. Um, your three VPCs, so you can see right here, I have two VPCs um, set up. Uh, one is within this uh, block that did never really work. I can actually delete this, delete VPC. Don't do that, unless you're really sure. Um, so what I had set up was I had two VPCs set up because my business requirements basically had, I needed to get to this, um, to this server I wanted to separate out the web server from the RDS service and completely separate, not be on the same network, just as a security measure, right? Uh, dealing with uh, kids' information, parents' information, it's, uh, on a, it's a public program, so, so and I, and I kind of had an idea that someone would be coming after me and wanted to know, hey, how do you do your security? So this is, this, hey, this is what I did. everything was separated out. But then I had a particular uh, need where I had my public access the web server, but then we would, would go to a pool side, so where we had the new kids register for this for different classes. We had a server on site, and the server on site had a copy of the R, of the RDS system, or if it, it, it um, or it had uh, a uh, connection to the live uh, service as well. So, but I needed to bring it back in again. If I, if that live, if the internet connection cut out, um, I would just stay with that with the one. So I had to kind of make a decision when I was there on site. Hey, do I do you use my on site SQL service or do I not? Um, when we have the swim test, do we have a program, a FileMaker Pro that would connect to the database? And so I wanted that completely separated out with its own internet gateway. I wanted.